Well, thanks for coming. A couple comments about the game. First, uh, I want to thank Buckeye Nation like I did after the game that uh, never ceases to amaze me the following that Ohio State has. I've known that for a long time, way back from 1986-87 when I was here before and all the way to the Pac-12 game against Cal last year where the majority, I don't know if the majority, but there's a bunch of Ohio State people in that stadium and then this one uh, was a home game for us and, and we appreciate that. Um, second, just a couple comments about our opponent, Naval Academy. Uh, I've coached against Navy many times, uh, against Air Force uh, several times, Army I think once or twice, and uh, tremendous respect as, as most people do for uh, the discipline and, and uh, the way they play. Uh, this was probably the most talented of all the service academies that uh, we've coached against. I remember one year Army, I think Ed Warner was there when I was at Notre Dame and they won 10 or 11 games and were a top 20 team top 15 team, uh, and I remember leaving that field thinking that they're extremely talented. I felt that way about this group, very talented, very experienced, and uh, it was exactly what we expected. Um, uh, JC, uh, JT did okay. He was 12 of 15. He had a drop, a pick, interception, an interception, a drop, and a throwaway. Those are three incomplete passes. Uh, we shouldn't drop a ball, a very ill-advised pass down in the red zone. And then uh, a throwaway where we got beat up front quickly, and he, he just got rid of the ball, which was actually a good job. Uh, interesting comment or interesting thoughts I shared with our team yesterday. I'll review that with you. Offensively, that was very poor the first half, very poor. And we had a punt, a field goal, a punt. Our first three drives, you, you can't do that in that game. And I knew that going into the game, and that's why you know get pretty uptight because every possession, you know, Navy's, Navy can score at any time. And plus, sometimes you only get three or four possessions a uh, half. But once again, punt. Uh, the good thing is when we did punt, we dropped it on the minus one yard line. Uh, we did hit a field goal. Uh, we had a punt again. Uh, I believe that was three and out. Then we threw an interception. And then we closed with a field goal. And uh, that, that was that kind of a first half. Usually, if your defense isn't hanging in there, uh, you have a problem. Second half was much better. You had turnover and downs and then three straight touchdowns. Um, our defense scored for us. They gave us the ball at the minus 43 and the plus 41 twice, obviously. Um, we're down 14 to 13, and uh, we went for it on fourth and two, and we came right back and we held them to five yards. That was on a Curtis Grant. If you remember, that was a that series of plays. That was the difference in the game. We spent a lot of time talking to our team about that. The chemistry on our team is very good. There's a tendency to, you know, when you go for a block punt, you run into the punter. When you go for it on fourth down, and why do we do this? Why do we do this? I think we make it very clear that we're going to probably go again next week for it. So that's get ready. And when they say defense, your, your job is to stop people. And Coach Fickle and Coach Ash made a comment to me, it's the best, chem you know, it's the best they've seen in the last couple, maybe three years even. Uh, as far as just, you know, when, when it's a sudden change situation or a fourth down, you don't get it, um, you just go do your job. And then uh, just that once again, this, those series of events on we're down 14-13, we went for it at midfield. You're midway through the third quarter. If things don't work out, uh, they score, we're down by eight, and you maybe get two possessions left in that game. And that was what was going through my stomach after we didn't get it on fourth down. But we get the ball back. And they punt the ball at the end zone, 80-yard touchdown, and, and then you take control of the game a little bit. So that was a very important series of the game. That's why I made such a big deal about that. I thought the defense, we gave up far too many yards. One series was disturbing. They ran a little counter play that uh, first time they ran it. And uh, uh, a four-play drive for an 80-some-yard touchdown. Other than that, I thought the defense hung in there real well. Uh, champions for the game, you had Darren Lee on defense, Duran Grant, and Tyvis Powell. Um, you can see two first-time starters there with Darren Lee and Tyvis Powell. Durant Grant graded out actually 100%. They didn't throw the ball, uh, but he was eight or eight, eight for eight of making plays. On offense, your champions, champions once again are guys that play with championship level effort and execution. Devin Smith uh, graded out 88%, two touches for 94 yards. Devin Spencer played very well. Was blocking downfield. He's, he's He's one of the top two or three blockers we've ever had at wide receiver. Dontre Wilson graded out a champion. He's five for five on making plays. Uh, he did have a drop, though, so that should say five or six. Uh, eight touches for 90 yards. Our two tight ends played pretty good, Jeff Hireman and Nick Vanette. Um, and then offensive line, Taylor Decker and Daryl Baldwin. 
Ezekiel Elliott was player of the game. So that's our champions. Uh, night game, Ohio State style, which is uh, uh, very unique. Our players are excited. Our fans are excited about it. We got a very good opponent, a coach that I've known for a long time, and uh, first time I've ever played against them. Uh, but they are what they are after now really studying. We studied a little bit in the, uh, in the uh, summer and off season, and one of the top, top five defenses in America, really good defensive coach. Offensively, uh, they're, you know, last year they struggled, but this year they're, they're, they have a quarterback that's a, a transfer that's throwing the ball very well in, in the one game. So I'll answer any questions for you. Coach, I don't think Marcus Ball made the trip. Can you give a, a status update on Marcus Ball? He's suspended for two games. He's not going to play this game either. Team rules, anything you can stop. Yeah. Doug, forever all. Urban, you talked some about the offensive line after the game, getting another look at it. What did you think overall of the line play, and, and what can you expect making a jump from week one to week two? Oh, we were very, uh, very disappointed early in the game. Uh, we had some uh, pressure, you know, it was, it was we wanted to throw the ball earlier, and it wasn't because of JT or the Whiteouts, because I thought our guys would make plays, and I have a lot of confidence in JT. It's just. We couldn't have minus yardage plays, and it didn't start off very well. So uh, I think they settled down uh, much better, played much better in the second half. And we just, you know, it's, there's a couple guys never really played at this, you know, played major college football. You Billy Price out there, Jacoby Boren. Um, Daryl Baldwin really hasn't played. Uh, Pat Elfline has, and Taylor Decker. So three of the five never really, that's the first time in that environment. And uh, I thought the second half they played pretty well. And we talked so much this offseason about the pass defense and everything you guys overhauled. And you play the first week and I think we're we ranked pretty it. high in pass defense. Yeah, it's great. Right? <laughs> are you are you are you just curious to see against a team that's more traditionally offensive? Yeah, like real curious. And and we have to shift gear, shift gears. Excuse me, shift gears. <laughs> we have to shift gears. Uh, you know that's this is that's a tough you know and Gene, I trust our scheduler and that's our AD and he's he's great and and uh, but that's uh, getting ready for that game's tough enough. It's just now you have to go back to the past defense that's brand new. So we actually started in earnest yesterday on the field when usually we don't do much on Sunday. We did and just get back to see if we have improved our past defense. Oh, I, I believe so. I believe uh, you know. Anytime you lose a great player, it's we're not a we're not a group of. In our, I'm just sharing you with what I tell our players too. When you lose, Braxton Miller is a Big Ten reigning Big Ten Player of the Year twice back to back, and to say we'll be fine, someone else has to pick up that. We have to have about 100 100 plus yards of offense. We did not have that Saturday. Um, you know, we need to get some of those skilled athletes in space, and when they get in space, they need to. And you saw a couple of those guys that got tackled. You'd like to pull through some of those tackles. So uh, I, I was not surprised at all by JT. I thought uh, I thought he handled himself very well for his first start. Um, other, you take away the interception, and I think he did very well. And uh, I'm trying to think of what misfires he had, or you know, a very a very uh, cognitive quarterback, very smart quarterback that gets us in the right plays and makes the right decisions. Next to Dave. Urban, a unique opponent, unique offense in the opener, a lot of history and tradition and intangibles there. Is this more the type of game these kids came here to play, a night game, TV, well-known? And will the jitters be any different? I guess not because it's a home. But well, someone told me all the excuses were there last week. You didn't hear us bring it up very often. We had nine new starters on offense. The good thing is now they're not nine new starters. There's, uh, they're veteran players now. So enough with the excuses and get going. Um, you know, I, I just think of our D linemen. You know, Joey Bosa didn't come to Ohio State to squeeze down blocks and keep people off his ankles. You know, that's what he had to do last week. He came to rush the quarterback and uh, penetrate. And uh, so I can, there's a big smiles across our defense of line right now to let him go play. You know, Mike Bennett, how'd you play, Mike? And I saw, I don't know if he graded a champion or not. And you see, I got double teamed every snap and one guy was, you know, trying to take my knees out, and one guy, and I mean that's that's all legal. It's really good football, to be honest with you. It's, but it's not what to answer your question. They certainly didn't come to play in that kind of game, the defensive line. However, I will say this: you come to Ohio State, play that kind of. It was a great atmosphere, pro stadium, 
and um, against a very good opponent. Front row, Bill. Kind of building on Bill's question, you said after the game you had a lot of work to do, but how much can you really take from that? How good do you feel about the team going into it? What can you really take from that game? Uh, concern number one is offensive line. We're facing a very – could be uh, – I'm trying to think the rest of our opponents. This will be one of the top two – one or two defensive lines we'll face all year. Our offense line did not play like an Ohio State offense line. Uh, the standard was set many, many years ago. I think Coach Warner the last two years really added to the reputation of Ohio State offense line. We did not play like that. Uh, the second half we played pretty good, but pretty good's not what we expect. You play pretty good this week, you won't win that game. So we have to get much better fast in the offense line. Um, you know, on defense, I, you don't take much from that, you know, because I didn't see a lot of missed tackles. I saw a couple execution errors on a new play they put in, and first game of the season, those things happen. Uh, I'm not concerned about that. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching how our pass defense has improved. And one question about Darren Lee. I mean, obviously, a huge play. Just overall, could you kind of talk about his development? Yeah, he's a big rated champion, had eight tackles. He's a guy that uh, uh, is a product of offseason program mat drills of uh, all the different ways we try to develop some toughness around here. You know, he's a quarterback from local New Albany quarterback. He's starting in one of our, you know, tougher guys on defense that throws us, throws it around. So uh, I thought he, I, I was not surprised. He's been practicing like that since spring ball. Kind of came out of nowhere. I didn't expect that in spring practice. Front row left, Lori. Coach, I mean, they're both tall to me, but Michael Brewer and uh, JT Barrett are, I think, considered undersized as a quarterback. Is the game any more favorable to that size quarterback now than it was when you started? What a great question. I, I think uh, space has made it a little bit easier. You know, back when you had uh, masses of people in front of you all the time. That's a great question. I've never really thought about. We had Chris Leak, who was an undersized quarterback, Josh Harris, and, and Braxton is not gigantic. So that's a. I think that'd be very good research. I think mobility has now taken over the 6'4", six, 6'5", six, guy that can't run. I mean, there's some great ones out there, but I mean, those defense coordinators would like to get after those guys because the threat of him doing something with the ball is not really there. Can I ask what you think makes Frank Beamer so successful? I know the past two years aren't what he's wanted them to be, but he's still one of the winningest coaches in the FBS. I have so much respect for him. Uh, when I first, uh, when I was the spe I was the receiver coach, and Bob Davey came walking in and said, "You're the special teams coordinator," and I said, "I don't want to be the special." I didn't really say it like that because you said you're out. But uh, he was one of the guys I went because he's you know Beamer Ball was something that's been around for a long time, and I'd like to think we've patterned ourselves ever since that was in 1999 or something like that, 98 when he said that. That's when the my appreciation for special teams. And then I see what Virginia Tech did for so many years. Uh, I studied him in person, and I studied him afar ever since. And he set a standard for it. He'll go down as, you know, how they won games. First of all, he's a classy guy that does things the right way. But second of all, his style of play is, is so unique for many, many years. He'll, he's, he's, obviously, he's a legend. Far left, Rusty. Uh, with Urban with uh, JT, a quarterback, are you? I remember two years ago you said the same thing about Braxton. You'd add a little bit more to it each week. Is this a situation yeah. where you refine what he's been doing, or do you add a little bit more to it, expand the playbook? No, we're expanding it, and uh, he's it was actually just in there. And this is a uh, you know this is a tough week to do it against. The one thing is they're not overly overly complicated. Complicated. They just play very very hard. So uh, yes, we will keep giving them more and more. We went into very vanilla uh, last week. Refer to this running game, both offense and defense, against the run and for the run. You were okay with the way you guys ran the ball, and for the most part, the way you defended against. We'll take away one series, and I know that's easy. That's really not the right way of looking at it. When you look at uh, the score being seven to six at halftime, I thought our defense played outstanding. You know that you, if that's twenty-one to six. We were in a bad, uh, and really their their touchdown. You know that was when the ball pit hit the pylon. That was a close call as well. So. Uh, I'm okay with uh, overall running the ball and stopping the run. Uh, that's not going to get it done this week. But for the first game out, I wasn't that disappointed. Far left, Matt. Um, dovetailing off of that with Rusty, for your running game, uh, the carries were very evenly distributed, it seemed like, from backs. Is Going forward, is that the way you'd like it because you got guys that can carry it, or do you need somebody to be a 
15, 20 carry guy? What, what are you looking for, I guess, this week and down the road? From your yeah, practice? last year we uh, had a guy that was a 20, 25 carry guy. Uh, we have some pretty capable players. We also don't have that body type to go just slam it in there so many times in the offense line. and. So that's a, that's a good question. I'm gonna, we're going to let it see. I know there's a lot of guys here. Rod Smith uh, had the play of the day. He held a block on a punt return for 11 seconds. And that the, the way we do our business here, that entitled him some carries. I mean, it was an 11, one of the greatest efforts I've ever seen on a, on a play. For 11 seconds, he locked down a, a defender and then uh, knocked, knocked him down at the end of the play. It's worth what if we, we could get you a copy. One of the greatest plays I've ever seen. So when you when you get guys like that doing those type of things, Jalen earned some carries last week. Dontre certainly has. Then you got uh, Zeke, you got uh, uh, Curtis Samuel. All these guys are earning these carries, and so you know I, I think I it's probably going to be like that again this week, just because these these young guys have earned these carries. Front row right, Tim. Yeah, Urban. One quick, you know, you just touched on it, the pylon. What, what what was explained to you about that? I guess the rule is if you touch a pylon in any way, it's a touchdown, but but he hit it from the back <laughs> instead of the front. I mean, just well, how was it explained to you, or was it? It wasn't. Uh, our official. I'm not one of those guys that rant and rave at officials, and, and uh, I I know there's a replay. You know, I heard there were two calls. We sent the one in as well, where Zeke rolled over a guy on the third down and four, and someone told. I didn't really study it that close, but we sent it in, and I'm waiting on the response back. But if it touches the pylon, it's a touchdown. The question I had is, did part of his body go down or out of bounds before he did it? Great play by that kid. Because he was he was out of the. Yeah. And the other play. thing, David Smith just all of a sudden just pops up uh, every now and then and makes a huge play. He, you've been with him, Brandon, for three years now. Explain what he's about, in your opinion. He's the best deep ball player. Uh, I, I, you know, we've done doing this for a long time. I want to say one of the best deep ball players we've ever had. He adjusts so well to the ball. He's uh, caught. Someone said 18 or 19 touchdowns, and his average is over 40 yards per catch on a touchdown, and that's that's unique. Uh, he's extremely fast. He tracks the ball down very well. Um, it's not like we're holding them. You know, the, the team we played against was a very soft zone. They weren't going to give you the deep balls, and they had a coverage mistake. That's how that happened. Well, was that a huge play not only for him but for JT to recognize? Um, you understand what I mean? Did, did everybody kind of like build on that one? I guess? Well, we you know we wanted to do that early in the game. It was actually the same play where we caught Dontre on the uh, about a 30-yard pass in the first half. Same exact play, only the. It was designed. It's called uh, well. It's it's a H H levels play that's really designed. Take a look deep first. If it's there, take it. If not, come down. Check down two to three, and and they miss miss hit the coverage. So that's that's always a big part of our. And one of the reasons Devin's doing so well in our offense is that's the number one look on all of our. Well, not all of them. The majority of our play action passing game. Front row right, Austin. Awesome. you mentioned that you guys maybe came out a little vanilla. Looking to expand the playbook for JT this week. Is there a learning curve for coaches, just like there would be for Barrett on the field, in terms of learning what he does well, what you want, how you're going to call plays for him? And uh, once again, I I think Barrett's part of it. The offense line's the other big part of it. You know, what can those guys do? And what can they do well? And uh, we're expecting them within the next couple of weeks to be able to do it all well. Uh, but so it's not just JT. It's it's when we say expand the playbook, it's for JT and it's for the offensive line. And once those two groups come together, which I'm expecting that to happen rather quickly, better we won't win this game. Uh, then we'll continue to expand it. Coaches always say this time of year that they expect the biggest jump maybe from week one to week two. Just for JT, what, what do you anticipate would be an area where he could make some strides right away? Uh, good question. Um, just trying to think with the mistakes he made. You know, I. I Honestly, he was he was pretty good. You know, I just think more dynamic. You know, but then I had a 16-yard run on a, you know, when Ezekiel Elliott led uh, on the draw play. So, you know, he's done pretty good. You know, he's just not the dynamic guy, and I wouldn't mind a little. You know, when you go, go. Um, but he he played pretty well. Last couple of questions, Todd. Front row. I mean, we're all asking you about JT. It seems like a lot of your answers are you you lack confidence in your offensive line right now. Uh, the second half helped. You know, spring practice did not help. Uh, training camp helped, and then the first half did not. Second half uh, really helped. So to say I don't have confidence is probably not not fair because uh, we called on our own 20-yard line a play-action pass to go win the game, and I wasn't going to do that in the second quarter. 
in the second half, I gained a lot of confidence in our because I saw their demeanors change at halftime. And you know, it's you know, there's there's a redshirt freshman out there playing. There's a senior who's never played really much competitive football, and there's another guy, oh, another red, uh, young player that hasn't done much. And, and you guys didn't have a whole lot of plays in that game. I think you only had seven in the third quarter. Did you get everybody in that you wanted to no. offensively? No, uh, Raekwon McMillan. We have to get him in the game. Uh, he got on some special teams. Eric Smith got on some special teams. You know, Sam Hubbard's close. No, we did. We have to. Johnny Dixon's close. We have to get other guys in the game. And last question, uh, middle. Jeff. Yeah. It was actually pretty similar to that as far as the freshman. I remember uh, after last year, you said you wanted to make sure that those young guys were more ready to play after some of those guys didn't get a chance to get in a year ago. Uh, I think four played on that first game against Navy. Do you want to you kind of mention that you want to get those? Only guys four played? For the true freshman from this. Yeah. We need more than that. And, uh, they have to earn that time, but you know, Raekwon will play this week. And uh, the other names, you know, that I mentioned are getting better and better. And we have to, get, you know, Dante Booker had a turret, you know, he cut his foot on a something, and so he didn't, he wasn't really ready to play. We got to get him ready to play as well.